Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the 10th episode of Magia Wrecker. And last episode was a bit of a sad one. We got full on into Sana's backstory, learned a lot about her, and kind of why she feels the way she does, wanting to be invisible and all that. And it was not a happy backstory, not not at all. But she did make friends with an AI called I, which was great. They, she spent like a few weeks or so, rough, roughly, something like that, with her in this kind of fantasy land, essentially. And eventually, reality came knocking in the form of Iroha, who said, you know, we gotta, we gotta bolt. And Sasana's just like, well, no, I like it here, it's better, and I got a friend, so could you just, like, go away, Iroha? But then the friend's like, no, 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 this, this is, this was the end game all along, I, I can't exist anymore, I want to be deleted, you gotta, you gotta go, I, I can't have the wings of Magiusu using me, it's, it's horrible, so you gotta, you gotta go, and then right on cue, we got what was her name? Alina, Alina Gray, Alina Gray, something like that. She was a fun character, uh, for sure. But she is a bad guy, so we had to shoo shoo her away for a bit, and then we had a very heartfelt, sad goodbye. And I think that's pretty much pretty much what we left off on. So, yeah, I'm not sure what we're gonna get here. So let's just jump into it and find out. Three, two, one, play. Aniplex, yeah, yeah, I, I know. Boom, 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 boom. Now the anime. Well, it looks like we're already outside. This is a flashback. And this is definitely drawn differently, so it very well could be. Or just a dream in general. You know, you're kind of terrifying without eyes. Just gonna say that. Oh, careful, careful, you're gonna break your doll, and probably yourself, uh, oh jeez, I, yeah, I didn't know it was made of glass, but yeah, that would definitely break it, if it was, uh. so, uh, so we're still in the middle of the goodbye. She's gone. <sighs> oh. Uh. Is the world still... I guess the world's breaking. Which makes sense if I is gone. Oof. Yeah, you better hurry up. She's not gonna survive that fall. Okay. Don't worry, don't don't worry me like that. Oh, is that uh Yeah, that's her. I'll get your name down eventually. I'm pretty sure it was Alina Gray or something similar to it. So she's still around. So we had like a couple minutes dedicated to finishing off the events of last episode. Just love when she comes towards the screen with her big old hammer and her big old smile. It's an odd combination of cute and terrifying. Let me end the opening with going back home, it seems. That's what you do after a tough day of fighting witches and Uwasa and whatever, whatever else cult members.
Oh, that's an incredible view. Oh, her, okay. Unknown user. <laughs> oh no, not the spanking. Anything but that. I assume that's what they're referring to. Glad to see everyone else is still doing things. Magnetic mode. How many modes do you have? Don't just push buttons, please. You power mags. Oh no. This can't be good. Oh, it's moving. I told you not to push any buttons because of this. Oh. <laughs> and even the bike is terrified. Yeah, when they said mag magnetic mode, they were not kidding. Can we, like, fix this by pushing more random buttons? <laughs> uh, you were too worried about being punished <clears throat> to do your job and pay attention. Oof. Are those rocks? I don't... That, are rocks magnetic? I, I don't know, science. It doesn't really matter. This is a problem, I'm sure. Oh. I just thought a random rock was going to hit her. Uh, that's what it was for a second. Uh, but what exactly are we doing? I'm not sure. I mean, it looks cool, whatever she's doing. But so far, we're just kind of collecting garbage. And they're still in the air. Oh! Ow. Right to the face. And I guess the magnetism mag 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 is off. <laughs> Completely in sync. Yeah, that was unfortunate. <laughs> you guys are the bad guys. I, what are you saying? Yeah, what happened to her? Okay, she's fine. The rest of them found her. We didn't do anything, we just hit a button and everything went wrong from there. <laughs> oh. Oh, jeez. You're what? I wouldn't mind having a rear end cage. Trying to find a use for it. I believe that. I mean, there's some really interesting visuals. <laughs> but nothing a hammer can't solve. Oh, except for maybe tentacles. That might be, that might be too much for a hammer to deal with. You generally want a sharp weapon first tentacles. Uh, I, I, we're not on your side. I'm sorry. We can't agree with you. Oh no, from all over. Looked like it came from both sides. They were gonna wrap her up, but I guess, guess not. And man, this girl is just having a great time, isn't she? Oh, <laughs> ow. Gotta watch out for that. Oh, geez. that was way too close. <laughs> Nothing's gonna stop her, though. Oof. I do kind of mind, actually. If, but I doubt my opinion matters to you. Yeah, firewood might come in handy in this place. Oof. Oh, yeah, here we go. This should do some damage. And I think it did. Of what? Is that, is that how it works? She takes up so much of the animation budget on just poses and stuff. No? God. 
No. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> I know, right? There's like crap everywhere. Oh. Oh, is that mommy? <laughs> I think it might be. It definitely is. Okay, I feel better now. It should all be okay. Yeah, you better. She leaps quite an impression. That was the most beautiful art ever, mommy. Don't judge. Glad someone remembers their names. Uh, why are they just listening to what mommy says? Oh, hello. You're here. We're around here too. Yes, me for you. Thank you for reminding me. I knew it was me something. Oh, the laugh. It's so terrifying. She needs her hat back, thank you. It really completes the outfit, so... Away from your gun, I assume. I guess you can just do that, just peace. No concern about getting shot in the back or anything. Uh, I've missed you, mommy. Yeah, that's what I was hoping was not true. Come on, mommy, don't. Don't be that way. Okay. Oh, this just got so much worse and more complicated. Will you let me for his outfit, though? I'm still coming to terms with this mommy development, honestly, internally. I can't just root against mommy. I just... It's supposed to be such an awkward position. I don't know what to do. Uh. And there's still half an episode left. Because as soon as they followed orders from Mommy, like, I sort of knew that's what that meant, but I didn't want to accept it for a good couple minutes. And of course, when she didn't shoot... Uh... L whatever, Grey, that reinforced it, but I still didn't want to believe it, and then I just straight up said it, so... But anyway, back home. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. We can see you just fine. We're not those filthy normies. Without magical powers. Only one side. I like guess probably how it's supposed to be, but still, it looks weird. Like half is missing. Yeah, I like how just abrupt we went from all that to this straight up hanging out at home slice of life feel scene. This is just so much more peaceful. Of course, Sana's still not not a hundred percent better. <laughs> well said. Yeah, you weren't in the previous previous scene with her. I think we'll get there eventually. Cups, we got four. 
just, that's not enough, is it? Like, don't ask me to do math all of a sudden, but it's probably not enough for our full group. She just looks so depressed, it's very sad. I understand why, but still, it's just so sad. Man, those two are pretty buddy-buddy, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, that was pretty obvious, what we were, obviously, what we were going to do. <laughs> we need more cups, the more we grow. Yeah, so five total, that's what I thought. Hopefully we can pick out a good one. A cute one. With kittens. <laughs> I guess my guess was right. It doesn't literally everyone. I think I got one like right about there. In the background. Hmm. Jeez. It's, it's a, lot of, a lot of cups. <laughs> I guess you can argue with that. <laughs> I was brain famous. That's a line. <laughs> Cows brain famous. Uh, that my favorite single single line of the show so far. I mean, there's a lot of options here, like an insane amount of options. So not easy. It's a freaking cup. It has, as it should be. <laughs> Got like a cool transparent table. Yeah, and then we head over to Sana, who has a very complicated, unpleasant family related back backstory. Don't leave, Sana. I'll never find you. I walk this lonely road. But seriously, come back, Sana. We don't want to lose you again. We just got you. Is she going back to her family? Is that... I don't really want that. That's a great view, though. Wow. I would just set up a chair right there and just watch. Uh, Sana's room. Really cute door. Wall. Combo. <laughs> well, you know. I don't care too much what she thinks. I, I did not ask. How could I forget when I never knew? Just the family moving on without her, like she doesn't even matter. Uh. Uh, please stop making me watch this. At least we're walking away from it. As we should. Sana's too good for them anyway, so if they don't need her, then good riddance. Hey, Kazuma Des. A lot of names. And they're basically all unimportant people, I'm pretty sure. Yes, that's the only name that mattered. There's somebody waiting for you, your real family, so come on, go run over there real quick. Well, I, I didn't mean you literally had to run, just just go there. You can take your time. I don't want you to fall. But... But she seemed like she'll be fine, so... She came back, without incidents. I'm so glad. Oh, <laughs> playing video games. It's a great way to pass the time. 
<laughs> uh, so wholesome. <laughs> yes, let's do it. That was that was cute. Uh, and hopefully, we can now start to have a bit more happiness in Sana as she more embraces her new family. Yeah. There's all the cups. <laughs> that stupid cow cup. Cool. She's actually stepping up and wanting to participate. That's it's great progress. They gotta be pretty happy about that. The first step. Episode 10, my name, Watashino Namae. And her name is Sona. I almost said John Cena there, like unintentionally said the name. Good thing I avoided such a thing. And that last half went by in like a second, I swear. There's got to be something after the... Yeah, that went by way too quick. There's definitely something after the ED. Because I literally felt like it was, when, it was like a minute after we went back home to when this ED played. It felt like it was like a minute. But yeah, just uh, Sana watching the family basically move, moving on, you know, having a full, complete family dynamic that doesn't include her. That was hard to watch, man. Just uh, that hurt me so much just to look at. Like if that went on much longer, it would have started to tear up. That was just rough. But it's okay because Sana's got her new family, so... And it's good that she finally started to embrace that. And here we go. What's... What are you? Is that a Digimon? What was that? Oh, and here's... Mommy, I had kind of forgotten about this. Mommy, why are you with the bad guys? I mean, I know Kyoko kind of was too for a little bit, but that was pretty short-lived. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> wow. That was great. I love that more than I probably should have. <laughs> it's how so considerate. <laughs> it's these freaking twins. And we're making, yeah, food over here too. Okay, so that was like a. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call you an amazing senpai, so. Would it make Yachio happy to hear that? I'm not sure. <laughs> not the only invisible one. It probably does, it might, maybe it doesn't. I think it was to eliminate witches and save magical girls, right? <laughs> yeah, we're both basic enemies to each other. Yeah, did they mention my sister or or the other two? Yeah. Oh, is that name ring a bell? Huh. 
so you have heard of her. But, I mean, it's not exactly great news that she's part of the Wings of Magius, but it's something at least. Please watch again. You insist. Okay, yeah, that's that was the episode. Okay, that was the tenth episode of Magia Record. And like I said, the first couple episodes were just dedicated to kind of finishing off our thing before. We actually had some sauna visualizations. Like I'm not exactly sure what to make of that. Because it was kind of like a dream like thing, but might also be symbolic. Like I really don't know what to make of that exactly. So can't really say too much on that. But yeah, everything crumbled and we left. And that was pretty much it for the beginning portion. Like the very beginning portion. We had our two Tsuyo Tsubasa, whatever their names are, twins, being very panicky. Yeah, what the, the now I can now I can actually read what this said. Unknown user in Uasa space, Alina Gray has already lo has logged out. Oh no, yeah, the, this is quite terrible. So they were concerned over that for a while, and then our gang just kind of sneaks up on them because of that. And just pushes around a button, because why not? I'm not sure what that magnetism feature was really meant to do. Like, because she obviously just turned it on, put it on max power, and pulled a bunch of random crap to them. But nothing really came of that, I don't think. Aside from a big old mess. We had, yeah, Alina Gray put them in green cubes and, like, store them? Or, yeah, not really sure what she did either. I guess she would just continue them. But yeah, for some reason I thought something big was going to happen with that, like we have like a giant metal monster or something. She says about a rearing cage, which I also don't quite get. Okay, yeah, so she got the green cube back up here and took it back out, so... So I guess it just was used to summon a witch, I guess? I, I don't know, I can't say I understand all these witch Uwasa magical girl mechanics very well, but... I guess she used the metal to summon a witch or something, I I don't know. I guess the details don't matter too much, we, we had a witch to deal with, that's kind of the point. So I guess it just was a matter of she was raising a witch in a cage and just popped it back out. I guess that's all it was. <laughs> and then we had our fight scene, I, just, I enjoy Felicia just running around with her hammer. Like, that's always the, the height of a lot of these fights. She just runs around with her hammer, breaks things. Occasionally has to get rescued by someone that's less reckless, you know? I do like the fiery hammer attack. That looked really cool. And just kaboom. Just very effective attack. Yeah, Alina Gray called them guilty. Again, not sure exactly what she meant there. <laughs> just, yeah. It's really kind of hard to under fully understand Alina Gray. She's one of the... One of the crazy appearing characters, you know? But I'm sure there's plenty of logic and reasoning to her actions as well, once we get past the the weird artist in her, you know? And then Mommy showed up. My first thought was, yay, Mommy showed up. Reinforcements, backup, everything should be fine now. I felt pretty silly in retrospect thinking that now. <laughs> uh, yeah, just... She talks to Tsuyo Tsukasa, Tsuyo Tsukuyo, There's, their names are so similar, it makes it hard to remember them both. Tsukasa and Tsukuyo. Yeah, she says their names and they say, yeah, yes ma'am, and just, uh, I, I kind of felt like a, a needle stabbing my heart after that bit. But I still, I still refuse to accept it. I was like, no, no, maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding, maybe she just... They just are intimidated by the greatness that is Mommy, and they wouldn't dare defy her, despite, you know, her being an enemy or whatever. <laughs> you know, but, uh, no, that was just wishful thinking. It was all this wishful thinking. And then Felicia was the one that said it. She's with the wings of the Magius. Just, uh. So what was it Mommy said in response to this? It's all for the sake of salvation. We're also searching for a way that won't cause sacrifices. When a witch or Uwasa goes berserk, we also try to stop it. So... Your girls will understand eventually. Okay, so... From all this, it def definitely sounds like she thinks the, the Wings of Magius are in the right. Like, their way of doing things is just fine. So, that's concerning. There's always a possibility that this is like a double agent sort of play because even Kyoko was part of their group like temporarily before she left it. So this could be a double double play kind of thing, but I'm not sure really because 
the show does kind of sort of seem like it's trying to get across the idea that neither group is really wrong necessarily. They just have different ideas of how to, to do this, you know. And Bombi being a part of the group is what really, really drives that point home. Because up until this point, with the possible exception of me for you, and everybody on that team, we could just kind of chalk up to, well, they're just wrong, you know, they're just an enemy, a little bit misguided, we'll help them at some point, you know. Even me for you, we could, we could kind of do that with, but then Mommy joined the group, and that really, that changes it quite a bit, actually. Unless it's a double play thing, like I said, it's otherwise, yeah, this, this complicates things a lot. Then we even had the flashbacks in her head of, like, Sayaka and Madoka and stuff, and that's what really really made me doubt the double agent idea like that's what really because that was what i thought because that was my biggest theory until that bit there and then it kind of went down quite a bit of course it could just be them trying to mess with the audience but yeah just i don't know i have so many mixed feelings just flying around through my head in regards to that i just i don't know not much more i can say about it but just why why must the show do this to me but anyway, that was half the episode. The second half, we actually just got to chill at home, mostly. Which I appreciate because, yeah, in Magical Girl anime, the best ones are like half fighting action and half just regular slice of life thing. Because the classic Magical Girl thing, that's kind of what it's all about, right? A girl tries to live her regular life, hang out with friends, do her schoolwork, and when push comes to shove, she's got to transform and fight bad guys, you know? Just to kind of protect her regular way of life. You know, that is kind of the classic Magical Girl thing. So, I do think any kind of Magical Girl anime should have at least a certain amount of just kind of relaxing, hanging out with friends, just chilling. Because that's essentially the life you're protecting with all the fighting, you know? Otherwise, what meaning does it have? So, I'm glad we got a decent chunk of that. However, there was, a, of course, a real, po a real point to this, because Sana, we, re we rescued her, you know, from a lot of that stuff. However, she's still not in the best place mentally. She still has a lot going on, and still a lot of feelings about various things, you know, her family, probably self-esteem issues, they've had a lot of issues, still thinking about I. So, at this point, she's just kind of moping around the home, and we want to help that. We want to help that, so what do we do? We go shopping for mugs, which was a brilliant idea. It's this <laughs> Apparently, they went to the perfect place for it, too. Yeah, were Felicia and uh, Yui are, are always that close? Like, they're walking here. I mean, Felicia straight up has her hand around her waist, like, straight up lover's style of walking here. So that kind of caught me a little bit off guard. I didn't realize they were quite like that, but, you know, there you go. I can certainly get behind that. So that was just, that was nice. But yeah, this place has like a million mugs. Like, how could you possibly pick one? But anyway, Sada said you want a cat one, which, yeah, can't go wrong with that. <laughs> so and then we have this bit it's funny because obviously the, the point of the scene was the, the primary point of the scene was to have Sana get a cup right you know we're trying to help her she's kind of the focus in spite of that we still had a very interesting scene in this that had nothing to do with Sana which was of course Yui and Felicia together where she said she wanted a cow cup which was a bit of a weird random choice <laughs> and I loved her explanation because they're good Already great reasoning. <laughs> the meat and the milk. Yeah, I mean, cows are pretty amazing animals because of that. <laughs> you chose something you mean to eat. I don't think you should eat the cup, so don't worry. People don't fight when they're eating. It's eating something delicious, right? And that's true, you know, mostly. There's probably exceptions. Cows bring families together. I don't know why, but that line really just got me. That was funny. <laughs> Cows bring families together. I don't know. Just I, I had no idea she was such a big fan of cows. <laughs> Tsuruno, get this pig one for yourself. That's a great way to end it off. Because that kind of sounds like an insult, you know? But it probably wasn't meant as one. Just pig's delicious too, you know? Uh... <laughs> I don't think she liked the idea, though. That was just an amazing little scene. It was so unimportant in the grand scheme of things of the episode, but it was such a great scene. And then there's Yachio, you know, she's picking one too. And then we got to see all the cups, right? We got five of them here. The cow one obviously belongs to uh, Felicia. We have the cat one, which is of course Sana's. Then we have three more. I'm trying to see 
which guess which one is which. I mean, we probably saw them use them, use them at some point, but yeah, the pink one I imagine would be Iroha. The the, the night sky one I guess would be Yachio's, and the other one, you know, process of elimination would be uh, Yui's. So yeah, if I had venture guesses, that's what they would be. So. And this is in this line here. With this kind of thing, it feels like we're a family, doesn't it? And I think that was like a big part of the idea they were trying to get across in the second half is that Sana has a new family, so she doesn't need to worry about her old one that discarded her. So, but of course, she couldn't accept that right away. She had to kind of leave, see her old family, see them straight up move on without her to really, to really appreciate the new position she's in, like really to, to, to make it real, you know? So, although that scene was very unpleasant to watch, it, it at least it got her to let go, you know, closure. That's what I was looking for, closure. So, it's all good. I'm not sure what the scene with all the names was about. Unless that's supposed to be, like, a bunch of parents calling out their child's name to kind of show that that's not going to happen for her anymore. I guess that was the point of it. And then we had Sana, who did the... Or not Sana. Yeah... You know, names. Iroha. Iroha said Asana's name because, yeah, she now has Iroha in her life to do so. So, yeah, great little development we had there for Sana, for sure. We come back and just playing video games, and <laughs> she's like, yay, get in here. Let's let's beat up Felicia together in the game. <laughs> that was also a really cute scene. So, yeah, I definitely felt like a family by the end of the episode, that's for sure. And then the biggest... The biggest... The biggest proof that this got through to her was just, yeah, offering to step up and help with family stuff, you know, cooking, so. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was pretty good in episode. Most of the second half, that's what I really liked. The first half just kind of made me sad with all the mommy stuff. And we even had this bit at the very end with uh, Me For You, where she had her, you know, Kohai show up, the twins. And I really thought that was cute when, like, one of them is... She edges the door, one of them's there, and then one just kind of pops up from behind her, just... I don't know why, but I love that so, so much. And of course, I always enjoy their nah thing that they do. I mean, that's pretty typical twin stuff, but still. I love all of that. You know, just... And then she sees them over at the, at the counter cooking. But then we had a bit of a flashback here that showed what I assume is Yachio and someone else. I'm not sure who that's supposed to be. But when I first saw this, I, saw this, I thought we were transitioning back over to, like, the other household, you know, our main household. Uh, you know, because Yachio was there, but pretty quickly I realized it was just a flashback, probably in the time period where Mifuyu and Yachio were, you know, getting along. But that's clearly not Mifuyu there next to her, so I'm not sure who that's supposed to be. It's probably someone that we've seen at some point mentioned, but I, I wouldn't remember. So I'm not sure. But clearly the, the twins cooking reminder of those good old days. But... Yeah, the episode is making it very hard to see the wings of Magius as just straight up the enemy, right? Because that was true before, to an extent, that they never really felt like enemies that we hated and wanted to, you know, destroy or whatever. They always just kind of came across as misguided people that we have to deal with that we can hopefully, uh, hopefully teach them that that's not the right way to go about things, you know? That's always kind of what they came across as, rather than a foe that needs to be completely vanquished. However, like I said, Mommy joining it really basically escalated almost every feeling I had about that group, I guess would probably be the best way to put it. Because, yeah, now it just feels like a group of people that I just... I don't dislike them. You know, the twins are really fun. I quite like them. They seem very nice. I... You know. Uh, Mifuyu obviously has that past friendship thing with Yachio, and that obviously doesn't seem like a bad person either. And then we have, you know, Elena... Ray, I'm still trying to remember her name, but I think that's what it is. Uh, she, I mean, she comes across more crazy than I think any of the other members of the Wings of Magius did, but still, she's not She's not really hateable or anything, you know? She's obviously a very entertaining character, to say the least, so I can't really hate her either, even though she does come across as the, probably the most evil of a lot of the, the main members of that group. She still doesn't, she's still not hateable or anything, at least not yet. So, and then, of course, now Mommy's joined it as well, and yeah, it just seems like we have two sides of the two sides of the same coin here, where I just kind of enjoy seeing both Habs try their best, and I can't really root against either of them, really. So, yeah, I'm not sure, really sure what to do as a viewer at this point. What I'm what I'm supposed to hope for, I guess I can just hope that we come to some kind of mutual understanding agreement, you know, if that's possible. 
But yeah, one last thing in the episode is that we did name drop Nemu, Nemu Hiragi here. So apparently she has heard of her. And I guess she's straight up a member of the, the Wings of Magia. So yeah, if we can talk to her, maybe that could be a hint to figure things out. That'd be great. So yeah, I hopefully we meet up with her at some point. Maybe we could ask her some questions. Because I don't think we've seen her actually in the in the main show, like outside of flashbacks. So it would be interesting to see for sure. I look forward to getting that. And of course, looking forward to eventually seeing what happened to Ui. So yeah, that's probably all I really got to say on the episode. I say that, but I think I've talked about this for way, way too long. But I'd say it was a pretty good episode, for sure. You know, I'm still coming to terms with the mommy thing, but I'm sure I'll have it accepted by next episode. So yeah, I know wait for the next episode. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Snokey and Ryan for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.